What's up guys Maelstrom here if you enjoy the video then like, subscribe and leave a comment down below so I can keep on making these awesome videos for you guys. Chapter 2, Realization and Flashbacks It has been 3 days since Naruto literally crashed in Zabuza Momoki along with his beautiful apprentice adopted daughter who prefers to go by Haku Momoki rather than Haku Yuki. Not that Naruto minds. Although the overprotective father figure of hers he could do without but hey you win some and you lose some. He was already planning on getting Zabuza distracted with a random Kiri Kanoichi so as to have enough time for at least one date with Haku to see whether or not they can make it work. However even though it's been three whole days since then that occurrence and they were still at least another two days until they reach Kiri. Why were they gong so slow? The answer to that is due to Naruto being a primordial god his stamina was virtually bottomless due to some techniques he has developed he can reach hidden villages that were halfway across the elemental nations within seconds but that took at least three tails worth of chakra for each person he transported with that technique including himself so at his level of chakra control and amount of chakra tails he just wouldn't be able to use that technique with the two accompanying him. So they were limited to moving at the speed of low level junions due to Haku only being able to keep the speed constantly for hours at a time before being unable to continue. This of course caused them to have to stop at least twice a day before making camp for the night which always had Naruto as the lookout while the other two slept. He'd never wake them up for their shift since he didn't feel tired or sleepy. The reason for this all ties back to him being the Juubi. Due to the excessive amount of chakra and small body in Baju terms. The energy in his body that is produced is much higher than the amount that is being used so in order to remedy this Maruta was able to go without sleep for about 2 weeks before he needs to sleep. Even then he would only about 8-10 hours of sleep before being ready to go for another 2 weeks. This would different if he was in his Baju form but due to its rather inconvenient size he rarely uses it. Thus causing his lack of sleep. Meaning that for about 96 hours straight Narita has been awake and for 72 of those hours he was extremely bored. An extremely bored Naruto is not something you ever want to meet and these upcoming bandits will be an example why. We have been running for 9 hours straight now Naruto-kun. Could we please take a break? Pleaded the exhausted Haku who looked completely exhausted. Zabuza wasn't much better off but his pride got in the way of him saying so. Ugh fine. Jeez you humans can be so slow and you tire so easily. I need so entertainment or I'm gonna kill both of you just to alleviate my boredom. And then I'll just bring you two back to life just so that I can do it all over over again, yelled a frustrated Naruto. Yoki was trying to calm him down but there was only so much kissing could do. Naruto needed to kill something and a lot of it too. Now that Naruto had allowed them to rest Haku and Zabuza were resting on a tree while taking their time drinking some water along with some bear meat. The poor bear never saw Naruto coming. One minute it was eating a deer and the next second it had been brutally cut into perfectly square one inch pieces while simultaneously cooked to a well done temperature. How Naruto did it the two didn't know but when they asked him he only said, Nothing escapes the hunger of an Okami. Wolf. They were suddenly snapped out of their thoughts when they heard bandits moving below them. There seemed to be at least 100 of them with about 30 of them having Chunin level chakra reserves at most while the rest were civilian level reserves. From their looks you could that they were bandits. Haku and Zabuza started feeling a bit wary. Not from the bandits but from the look on Naruto's face. He was smiling with an insane grin on his face. That smile nearly made them shit themselves right then and there. They started to pray for the poor bandits hoping their deaths were quick once they heard Naruto's words. Finally some entertainment. You two stay here, I'll go give our guests a warm welcome, stated Naruto with an insane grin that would make the Joker proud. He jumped off his branch and slowly descended in front of the bandits below. When the bandits noticed him they saw a kid no older than 12 and immediately thought easy pickings. That is until Naruto pulled out two identical weapons. These weapons would give him a moniker that would strike fear into the hearts of the living. In each hand he held a miniature scythe with brown handles wrapped in loose black wrappings that were large enough for one hand to wield each. The blade itself reached from his wrist to his elbow. The blade itself was made of a pure black metal with a metal wolf skull attached to part of the handle and reaching to about the middle of the blade. Think the scythe from Darksiders 2 but with the slight alterations mentioned. You bandits are lucky. You will be able to die at hands of these blades. Their names are the Shino Okami no Tsum and it is time for the wolf to feast upon its prey. With that said Naruto charged at the closest bandit and faster than the eye could follow Naruto cut of all of the man's limbs including the head. 
At that moment the rest of the bandits realized they had just signed their death warrants. All they could do was try to run away from this monster. Of course they didn't get far. One by one they fell within a matter of seconds. Some were killed instantly while others were left to bleed out from where they were missing their limbs. Naruto jumped from one bandit to the next all with a smile on his face. He was completely covered in blood and it seemed as though he enjoyed it. Now there were only 25 bandits left and they all decided to at least try to take him down with them. They thought that since they outnumbered him they could tail him on. The reason why they didn't think of this earlier was because their fight or flight response immediately kicked into flight. If we have to die here today then we'll at least take you down with us you demon. Yelled out a random bandit. A demon you say? Why thank you for the compliment. Said Naruto without a hint of sarcasm. He was being completely honest. He was a demon and he was glad that they noticed it. Thanks to that compliment I think I'll let you live. Then Naruto started charging up his scythes with chakra causing them to releasing a kind of black smoke. Naruto then sliced the air with each of them forming an X in the air. This launched out a black X-shaped wave of energy to fly towards the bandits. A few of them were quick enough to dodge the attack but ten of them were at least cut by it. At first they thought nothing of their wounds until they saw their flesh beginning to rot away and it was spreading across their bodies. This started to age away until they were nothing more than dust blowing through the air. The remaining bandits were horrified at the way their comrades had fallen. It was as if that wave of energy was filled with the essence of death. Like it, I call it Shino Nami. This technique requires no hand signs. All it requires me to do is release my Yaoki into blade and slice at the air instantly creating a wave of death. The shape of the wave can be whatever I wish it to be. I can even change its shape while it's moving towards an enemy. Exclaimed Naruto with a sadistic smirk on his face. I'll leave you trash alive just so that you may tell the world of what happened today. Tell them of what you witnessed here today and spread your fear into their hearts so that they know why all humans feared the dark. They feared the dark because of what thrives in it. And the only thing that thrives in the dark is death. Exclaimed Naruto with his voice becoming influenced by his Yaoki. W W what A R Y you? Asked the same bandit that called him a demon. Call me the Shino Okami. And with that Naruto disappeared from their sight and reappeared next to Zabuza and Haku. Once the bandits thought he was gone they ran as fast as they could towards the nearest village. While their bodies were moving they themselves were unconscious moving only because of their fear of the one that could have killed them without a care in the world. In fear of the Shino Okami. Back with Naruto, Zabuza and Haku. Kid I have never been more proud of someone I just met. The way you killed those bandits was simply breathtaking and the way you made them scream like little girls has told one thing and that is that you should become my apprentice. I will teach you the way of silent killing. This way your enemy won't be able to see you or hear while you take out their allies. Exclaimed Zabuza with such joy that one might think he might actually hug the blonde. Of course his pride stopped him. After all a grown man hugging a 12 year old boy. We already have enough pedophiles in in the world thank you very much. Otogakure. Achu. Are you alright Orkimaru sama Asked Kabuto. I'm fine. Someone was probably talking about my unending greatness and intelligence. Stated the well-known pedophile with an arrogant smirk. Oh would you look at the time. It's time for me to act all depressed about not becoming Hukage informing plans that are resulted from a complete overreaction. Back with Naruto and the gang. Sure why not. This way those pathetic worms will have more reason to fear me. Anyways we better get moving I will would rather not waste any more time. And with that they started moving once more hoping to reach Kiri by tomorrow afternoon. Of course there may have been some playful flirting along the way accompanied by some overprotective fatherly anger trying to justify the killing of said flirter. Although Haku returned the flirting it seemed as though Zabuza turned a blind eye when it came to whatever she did. Just like the majority of fathers with daughters around the world of fanfiction in real life. Ah too. At that moment the entire planet shook with the ferocity of the amount of sneezes that went off simultaneously. It was as if an earthquake of a level 9 magnitude went off over the entire world at the same moment. Four days after the entire world thought that it was the beginning of the end. After a couple of weeks of investigation, the scientists chalked this phenomenon to up some random nature shit. Their exact words were, We don't know what caused this. Nature is fucking weird. Back in the elemental nations, Kanaha about one week after Naruto's escape from the village. Currently everyone from the Naruto retrieval group were resting in the hospital. All of them had already recovered from their physical wounds but had yet to wake up. Currently each and every one of them were lying on beds and connected to a machine that displayed their heart rate and blood pressure. Laid out on the beds were the following people in the following order. Fugaku Uchiha, Tsum Inuzuka, Choza Okimaki, Jiraiya, Tsunade Senju, 
Minato Namakes, Kashina Uzumaki Namakes, and Hikari Uzumaki Namakes. Their family and friends were resting beside their beds waiting for them to wake up. Makoto Uchiha, Itachi Uchiha, and Sayuri Uchiha F.E.M. Sasuk were standing by both Fugaku's bed and Kashina Uzumaki's bed as well as Hikari's bed. Itachi was by his father while Makoto was by her best friend and Sayuri was beside her friend. You all know what Makoto and Itachi look like but you don't know what Sayuri looks like. Sayuri is about the same height as Hikari with long black hair just like her mother. She had kind black eyes that were filled with sorrow. She wore a loose-fitting black sweater with some black A and B pants that were taped off at the ankles. She wore standard ninja footwear. On the back of the sweater was a large version of the Uchiha clan symbol but the thing that stood out was the necklace she was wearing the necklace was made from a beautiful black diamond that was shaped into the head of a wolf with the kanji 410 on its forehead the sorrow in her eyes was not just for her friend but it was mostly for the one that she considered almost like family she missed Naruto and was greatly affected by his sudden leaving she could clearly remember the first time she met him and the time he first told her the truth behind Naruto Uzumaki Namakaze she also remembered the greatest mistake her friend Hikari had made when they were children. She was sure that Naruto was making sure that Hikari was reliving that moment in order to make her know why he hated her as well. Flashback no jutsu. Eight years after the K.I. Kiwabi incident, Hikari was currently hanging out with all of her friends which mainly consisted of the future clan heirs. Her friends are as follows. Kiba Inuzuka, Choji Akimaki, Ino Yamanaka, Shinobaram, Hinata and Neji Huga. Shikamaru Nara, and Sayuri Uchiha. They were all hanging out in the park by the playground. Currently they were all playing tag. Seeing as how Shikamaru was the laziest fucker even by Nara standards, he decided to use his considerable intelligence to hide somewhere where he could just doze off. His hiding place was pure genius that no one other than him would have thought of. He climbed up a tree and slept on one of the branches, which is where one could find him right now. Fortunately for him the others of the group were unable to find him since they didn't think of looking up. That is what would have been true if these group of friends weren't from ninja-born families. Since they had all started training since they were young, well younger than they were now, they could at least walk up perpendicular surfaces using chakra. Which is how Shikamaru was quickly found by Shino who then after tagging him disappeared in swarm of insects. Yup Shino has advanced further in the ninja arts than his fellow peers. Sayuri was at the edge of the park hiding from the rest of the group when she saw a blonde boy who was around her age. He was all alone reading some sort of book. There were no parents or family members of any kind anywhere near him. He wore civilian type clothing. He had on a blood red t-shirt with a pair of black shorts with a burnt orange stipe going down the side. As she moved closer towards him she could see that he had the bluest eyes she had ever seen. It was as though she was staring at an ocean of sapphire filled with pain and loneliness. All she wanted to do was hold him and tell him that everything would be alright and that she would be there for him. She took a few more steps forward and finally noticed that his attention was no longer on his book but on her. Is there something you need from me Uchiha-san? Asked the unknown boy with an almost dead tone. His voice sent children up her spine. Though his voice may sound dead to anyone else she could tell he was faking it because underneath all that pain and loneliness there was a sort of feral power she was able to see. It intrigued her to say the least. Why are you all alone? She asked wondering if she really wanted to know the answer to that question. However she couldn't help herself from asking because no one wants to waste their time on me. Not even my own family if you could even call them that replied the young boy. She involuntarily flinched when she heard his words. Why is that? Asked Sayuri. She couldn't help herself from wanting to know more about this boy's pain so that she could be able to comfort him. She knew this must be hurting him but she felt as though she could help him. Because to them I'm not nearly as important as my twin sister. I'll always be the mistake. Stated the boy. After that Sayuri didn't say anything. She didn't know what she could say. This boy the same age as her has gone through so much pain and yet somehow still manages to get through the day. Once she snapped out of her inner thoughts a pity for the boy she knows noticed that he had disappeared. Little did she know that she would see him again later that same day. Time skip. Same day. Evening at the Uchiha clan compound. The Uchiha clan was currently preparing for Sayuri Sama's surprise birthday party. They had started when she had left to go play with her friends and were putting the finishing touches. The guests had already arrived and were only waiting for Sayuri to arrive from walking in the park with her parents and Dirani Chan. All of the families were there. The Inizukas, the Akimaki, the Ibaram, the Yamanaka, the Hyuga, the Nara, 
and the Namakazes were present. Well most of the Namakazes Naruto was missing from the group not that anyone noticed as usual. A few moments later the birthday girl arrived with a thoughtful look on her face. What was taking up most of her attention? Well she simply couldn't stop thinking about the young boy she had met today. He took up most of her thoughts. Fortunately not to the point of a fangirl but a rather close second. Sayuri will not be a fangirl. No fucking exceptions. She was taken out of her thoughts by her dear Ani Chin who told her to go ahead and open the door to their backyard. When she did as she was told she bombarded with a loud chant of happy birthday. She had completely forgotten it was her birthday with the occurrences that had chosen to happen that particular day. For a few hours she received her presents played with her friends and thanked everyone for their participation. Finally came the time for her to blow the candles and make a wish. That is when her thoughts returned to that boy she met earlier. I wish that that boy and I could be friends. And with that final thought she blew away her candles. After eating a rather excessive amount of cake that can only be possible on special occasions such as these she decided to sneak away and walk towards the Uchiha Gardens. She loved the gardens where she was surrounded by the beautiful flow of nature. For some reason she just felt so relaxed whenever she was surrounded by nature. Hint hint. When she finally reached the gardens she saw that the lights were on which wasn't strange since the lights were usually on at this time in case anyone wanted to go for a stroll through the gardens. What caught her attention was the blonde hair she saw sticking out behind one of the bushes. When she went around to see who it was she saw the same boy she had met with earlier that day and he was still reading that same book. It's you. She gasped. She didn't expect to see him here. Usually only members from clans attend her birthday parties. Could that be why he's here? Is he a clan heir? But I've never seen him before today. Just who are you blondie? Yes it is me. The boy stated with an emotionless tone though she could tell that this time Time his words held some warmth in them. What are you doing here? Are you one of the clan heirs? Asked Sayuri rather bluntly but then again she never was good with being subtle. I am from one of the clans but I am not heir. And to answer your next question the clan I hail from is the Namakaze clan. Answered the now identified Namakaze. But the only Namakaze I know of is Hikari so how can you be a Namakaze? Asked the now confused Sayuri. If you remember our earlier conversation you'd be able to deduce that Hikari is my sibling. My twin to be exact. I am here because I wanted to be here not because I was forced to. You intrigue me Uchiha-san. Just as I do, stated the young Namakaze with a small smile. It was so small that she could barely see T-Bot she did not miss it. My name's not Uchiha-san. My name is Sayuri. Sayuri Uchiha. What's yours? Naruto. Nice to meet you Naruto-kun. Let's be friends. Stated Sayuri with a megawatt smile on face silently hoping her wish would come true. Naruto decided that he could at least give her a chance. After all she was one of the first to notice his existence. Sure. And happy birthday Sayuri said Naruto with a slightly larger smile and held out a small dark blue rectangular box for Sayuri. What's this? She asked innocently. I believe it is customary for a friend to give another friend a gift on their birthday stated Naruto with a small grin on his face. It seemed as though he pulled it out of thin air. Cough cough subit no mono no sozo cough cough creation of all things when she opened the box she saw the most beautiful necklace in existence. The necklace was made of black diamond with interlocking chains that connected to a wolf's head with a kenji for ten on the forehead. It's beautiful. Thank you so much Naruto-kun. She said with a beautiful smile as a small tear escaped her eye. And that was how their friendship was born but would soon be tested to see if she was truly worth his trust. Time skip. A week later, it's been one week since Sayuri gained a bit of Naruto's trust and usually for each day after then they would meet each other at the park and Naruto would usually have a book with him and Sayuri would be wearing the necklace. She never took it off. Currently they were both sitting down under a tree at the edge of the park. The good thing about being at that edge of the park is that it's by the huge wall surrounding the village so they are able to interact with each other without Naruto receiving justified punishments from the villagers. Luckily Sayuri was not around when these beatings happened and by happen I mean when the villagers charged at Naruto and then fell under his genjutsu. If she did witness it then she would notice his daujutsu. Anyway right now Naruto was reading his book while Sayuri was sleeping on his shoulder. She was exhausted from training with her Oni-chan since she doesn't get the chance very often so they trained to the point of her passing out the moment she sat down next to Naruto. This was the site that Hikari had arrived in on when she went looking for Sayuri. In this entire week that Sayuri had been with Naruto she was almost ignoring 
bullying all of her other friends including her best friend Hikari. So Hikari was annoyed that Sayuri was ignoring her so she went to look for her so that she could get her to hang out with her again. Of course she did this with a slightly bratty attitude so she may go overboard to get the things she wants only to lose some of the things she needs. You never know what you got until it's gone. When she saw her best friend ignoring her for her weak brother she became enraged and decided to confront them about Sayuri abandoning her. Sayuri Chan what are you doing hanging out with him? Yelled out Hikari. Her face was flushed red with justified anger. MMMM. What? What are you doing here Hikari Chan? Asked a sleepy Sayuri who looked like she would doze off once again in a few seconds. I'm here because you've been ignoring me and all your other friends for the past week. So why are you hanging out with that loser instead of with your real friends? Exclaimed the bratty Namakaze. First of all stop yelling like a Haruno before we all go deaf. Secondly why shouldn't I hang out with Naruto Kun? Asked Sayuri not understanding why Hikari was acting like this. Because he's a loser. Tu Chen and Ka Chen are training me and not him meaning I'm better than him. You shouldn't hang out with losers like him. Yelled Hikari frantically not understanding why Sayuri was being so difficult. After all she was obviously better than her brother so why should he be chosen instead of her? Through all of this Naruto was just sitting there reading his book wondering what Sayuri is going to do. Will she ignore his existence like everyone else or will she stay by his side as a true friend? He honestly thought she would do the former so imagine his surprise when she said the following. How could you talk that way about your own family? What kind of sister are you? From now on I don't want anything to do with you. You are not the kind of person I would want as a friend. Stated Sayuri who then proceeded to grab the dumbfounded Naruto by the arm and began to drag him towards the Uchiha clan compound. All the while Ikari just sold their dumbfounded at what her now ex-best friend has said to her. Uchiha clan compound. They had just arrived at the compound and Sayuri had apparently decided to take him to the place where he gave her the necklace. Luckily for them there was no one around. They sat down and took their time catching their breaths. More like Sayuri trying to catch her breath while Naruto was staring at her as though she had grown a second head. Why did you say those things back there? Asked Naruto with utter confusion. What do you mean? Responded Sayuri with another question. Why did you defend me back there? Wouldn't it have been better for you to have Hikari as a friend instead of some loser like me? Asked Naruto once again. Because your situation is somewhat similar to mine except on a more extreme level. Tusama says he loves me but I can't help but feel like I'm not good enough for him. My Ani-chan tells me I'm just imagining it but he doesn't know what it's like to be second best. To have your request for training to be ignored and to not have much expected from you. And besides family should love each other not treat them like they're trash. Stated Sayuri. When she turned to look towards Naruto she noticed something. He was reading his book but she could see a small tear going down the side of his cheek. Thank you. Sayuri Chan said Naruto with a true smile on his face. It seemed as though he had been smiling more often when she was around. Adding Han to the end of her name caused Sayuri to blush and turn her head away in an effort to hide it. And no problem Naruto-kun. Hey how about I introduce you to my family since yours apparently sucks. At those words Naruto couldn't help but laugh. How long had it been since he had laughed like this? So with that done they decided to go to meet her family. Time skip. 20 minutes later. Right now Naruto was sitting in Sayuri's living room while sweating bullets. Why? Because he was in a house filled with people just staring at him waiting for him to do something. He could deal with being ignored and he could deal with being hated but he had no idea what to do when he had three people simply staring at him acknowledging his existence. Of course one of those stares was filled with fatherly overprotective anger due to Sayuri holding his hand. Who are you and why are you holding my baby's hand? Asked Fugaku in a dangerous tone with his sharing and acting. Activated. Make sure you answer carefully. Sayuri was surprised at how overprotected her father was being that she couldn't help but smile with a little bit of satisfaction. Shit this guy's really protective of his daughter. With my kind of luck he'll probably hate me like the rest of this damn village. My name's Naruto sir. I'm a friend of your daughter. And just like that Fugaku's attitude did a complete 180 and he was all smiles. Ah oh, that's perfectly fine then. You have my approval. Declared the Uchiha clan head with a Mato guy level smile add thumbs up. Needless to say everyone in the room moved a minimum of another two feet away from him in fear of catching the MG disease. Somewhere in Kaneya. Youth Ku. Sugoi Gai Sensei. Even your sneezes are full of youth. Yelled what could only be described as a mini guy with iron brow that were just as bushy as his senseis. Youth, back with the non-MGS in the Uchiha clan compound. Dear, 
I think you've been hanging out too much with the MGS said Makoto with a feeling of foreboding with a horrible vision of the future if he were to continue training with them. At least he isn't wearing those horrible green skin tight suits. Kami forbid for if he did I might just have to kill him to save him from dishonor said Itachi in a completely serious tone along with his completely straight face accompanied a magical stick of Pocky sticking out of his. Yup completely serious. Here the hell did that stick of Pocky come from? And why the hell is glowing? Asked everyone in the room simultaneously. Itachi simply shrugged his shoulders. Don't know but it tastes like demon flesh. It's actually really disgusting. You could practically see the shit drops forming on the heads of everyone else in the room. Well moving on Naruto who are your parents? Asked Makoto in a kind voice that he has only ever heard from his mother when she was talking to his sister. Well I guess you could say that I have no parents or family. Said Naruto. After saying that he proceeded to tell the Okita family about how he is treated at home and how he is treated by the villagers while leaving a few choice things out such as him knowing about Yuki and becoming a god etc. Once he finished telling them his story he was suddenly bombarded by a fast moving Sayuri hugging him as if he would disappear if she were to let go. Tears were rolling down her face while she desperately tried to form coherent sentences. Makoto was also crying while feeling extremely angry at the woman she once considered to be a sister. Fugaku was shaking in rage as a few stray tears cascaded down his cheeks. His rage at his best friend could not even even be described with words. Itachi was torn between contorting the poor boy and going off to at least relieve the huckage of a few of his limbs. The only thing that stopped any of them from having a private audience with the huckage and the rest of his family were Naruto's next words. Is this what it's like to have a family? Is this what it's like to feel the love of a parent? Asked Naruto as tears went down his cheeks like a river. His voice was cracking due to how emotional he was feeling. His overshadowed by his bangs which only made him seem more fragile. These people were the first humans to ever see him like this since only those whom Naruto trusts ever see this side of him for this is when he's most vulnerable the Uchiha's response was to simply hug the boy and comfort him in his brief moment of weakness it seemed as though Naruto had finally found a family that he could call his own that night Naruto didn't go back to Namake's compound that night Naruto finally knew what it was like to be a part of a family that actually wants your continued existence flashback no Jutsukai since then the Okita family has always considered Naruto as one of their own. Now some would think that if this were true then he wouldn't have injured Fugaku or have trapped in hell of his own creation. Which is exactly why Naruto made sure not hit Fugaku too severely with the Shinra Tensei and when he sent Fugaku into the world of Tsukiyomi he made sure nothing happened to him and simply placed him in a coma-like trance that would awaken him the same moment the others awakened. Which just so happened to be right now. Slowly. One by one each person started to awake from their comatose state. It was then when the effects of what Naruto had done them were revealed. Tsunade was looking around fearfully as though anyone in the room would be capable of ending her life then and there. Tsum and Yuzuka was frantically clawing at her face muttering out incoherent ramblings. Choza Akimaki attempted suicide along with Jiraiya who both kept on muttering that they would rather be dead than live with those memories but were stopped by the ANB within the room. Fugaku seemed as though his spirit was broken and remained unresponsive to the world around him. Genjutsu. However the Yandame and his family were the worst off. Minato had begun to create explosive seals with his chakra that were replicated throughout the entire village throughout the homes of those who tried to kill his son and one enormous one above Kaneya. The seals were high powered explosives that if they had gone off would have blown Kaneya right off the map. While Kashino was providing him with the sufficient chakra to accomplish such a feat. Of course they were stopped before these explosives could go off by the Sandame. One quick chop to each of their necks and they were out once more. Unfortunately for the family the daughter was probably the worst off. Hikari had woken up and when she saw everyone in the room she did the last thing anyone would think of. She fucking smiled. Everyone in the room slowly started to back away from her. Even Sayuri was scared at this point. What had Naruto done to her if she was smiling after being in Tsukiyomi for all this time? Hey Sayuri-chan why are we in the hospital and where is Nisama? Asked Hikari in an innocent voice as if nothing had happened to her. It was as if instead of being tortured like the others where something else happened almost as though instead of pain and suffering she was give forgiveness. Hikari what are talking about don't you remember what happened a week ago? Asked Sayuri with confusion etched into her face. Did Naruto really decide to forgive her for everything she had done? For Naruto to forgive someone is rare especially when that someone is somebody who contributed to his loneliness. I remember Naruto Nisama leaving the party early but that's it. Said Hikari with complete honesty. Her 
eyes betrayed nothing and neither did her body language. She truly remembered nothing from after the party. However Sayuri noticed that Hikari was calling Naruto Nisama now instead of Ani-chan. She would have to investigate later. Too bad they didn't ask about her memories from before the party because then they would know exactly what Naruto had done to Hikari and while it may have been good for her it was in no way good for Minato or Kashina. Oh yeah they were fucked. Flashback no jutsu. Hikari's time in Tsukiyomi. At first she suffered just like all the others that had looked into Naruto's except for Fugaku but she didn't know that. She was forced to remember how she treated her brother when she was 8 years old. That was when she entered her bratty stage. She was forced to remember all the insults she said to her brother and all the times she tried to get Sayuri to stop being friends with him. It was heartbreaking for her to witness but she could only imagine how her Ani-chan must have felt. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry Ani-chan. TT this is all my fault. P please forgive me Ani-chan. I d deserve a any p punishment why you see fit. I'm so sorry cried out Hikari as she tried desperately to end the images of pain assaulting her mind. She even went to the point of grabbing one of her kunai and attempting to slit her own throat until a hand came and stopped the blade. When she looked up she noticed that the hand that saved her belonged to the one she was begging for forgiveness. HMPH. Maybe I can trust you. After all according to your memories you didn't ignore me or deny my existence. I simply left before you could prove that you noticed my existence. Said Naruto with a tone of honesty and understanding. However you will still need to prove your loyalty to me. Only then will I trust you. While what he said is true he did leave a few fake memories for her in her mind to make sure she doesn't betray him. These memories would only activate in certain situations which are for Ikari's safety and Naruto's amusement. Except a few that he left in order to cause Ikari to begin to slowly distance herself from her family. Not able to trust her own voice Hikari did the only thing that seemed right to do. Hug the life out of Naruto. Thank you Naruto Nisama. A dark grin formed on Naruto's face. Perfect the plan is moving along rather smoothly. Maybe things might even be moving ahead of schedule thanks to this. And with that Naruto removed the memories of what happened here from her mind while leaving behind the suffix she now had for him knowing that Sayuri would notice and figure it out in time. After all she was a major part of his plans for Kaneya. Flashback no Jutsu Kai. Time skip. After many sessions with Inoichi, after some sessions with Inoichi it seemed as though Minato and Kashina along with the other five ninjas were finally able to resume to their duties. Luckily for Minato. Hiras and Sarutobi had been subbing in for him during his brief absence so that the civilian council could not take advantage of Minato's absence and attempt to gain more political power for themselves. He was able to prevent information of Naruto's escape from getting out but who knows how long that would last. At least they couldn't brand him as a missing nin since he was still a civilian at the time of his escape. However once Minato returned to work his focus was not on the hellish paperwork in front of him but on more serious matter entirely. His son, how had he become so powerful? How had he gained those eyes? But more importantly how had he and the rest of his family ignored him for so long? How was it that they had only noticed his existence once Hikari had pointed it out to them only a few weeks ago? And why was it that Hikari had only decided to point it out then instead of before? I should probably see Inoichi again and have him check my memories for evidence of some kind of outside intervention. After all that is the only logical explanation for this. So with that final thought Minato cancelled the rest of his appointments for the day and headed towards the torture and interrogation department. He needed answers and he would get them. At the TNI department a few minutes later, Minato had just arrived and was silently hoping that Inoichi wasn't busy with an important interrogation. If it wasn't important then he'd just leave it to Anko or Ibiki to break the man or woman. Lucky for him Inoichi was currently lying back in the relaxation room that is reserved for those who had just come back from an interrogation. Hey Inoichi got some time to spare? Asked Minato in a serious tone which meant that at this moment Inoichi would have some time to spare for him whether he wanted to or not. Of course Hakuj-sama. What is it that you need from me? Asked the Yamanaka with an air of complete seriousness. If the Hakuj was asking him for something then he must have needed some memories to be revisited. And if he needed that then this was bound to be important. As you have probably already figured out I need you to check some of my memories to see if you can find anything that would have caused to have neglected my son for this long, stated the Hukage since this was no time to be subtle. Of course Hukage sama, if you would please sit down and tell how far back you want me to start searching. Knowing how far back he would need to start would help immensely and cut down how long it would take for him to find what he was asked to. Begin at around the time of the KI and work your way from there, 
but stay away from the bedroom am I understood? Stated the middle-aged cage with a blush at the end of C course Hukage sama And with that Inoichi entered Minato's mind. Inside Minato's mind, Minato's mind was rather neat to say the least. His mind appeared to have the outward appearance of the cage office except instead of furniture there were numerous boxes filled with files. Luckily each file was dated so Inoichi was able to begin rather quickly. It wasn't until he had reached the file that contained the memories of the week after the chaos that he noticed something off. He decided to dive in further in order to confirm his suspicions. Flashback no jutsu. One week after the KI. In the council chambers. Currently Minato was at a meeting with the clan heads, civilian council, and the elders. So far most of the meeting was taken up by the civilian side calling for the execution of the demon brat. Minato was rubbing his temples with his index and middle fingers trying to ward off the headache that was threatening to unleash itself. Shut up. The next person to even call my son a demon will have a kunai thrust into their brain before you could say huckage. Am I understood? In fact don't even speak just nod in confirmation I'd rather not hear your useless voices. Yelled out Minato in annoyance. Honestly why the hell did they have have a civilian council? The entire council nodded in understanding though some did so more hesitantly than others. Danzo was the only one of the civilian council that did not see Naruto as the demon he held inside of him. No he saw the young Jinchiruki for what he really was to him. The boy was a weapon that would be perfect for his root program. He knew that the fool of a cage would never allow him to simply train the simply because he would be more loyal to Danzo than he would to him. So a more elaborate plan was needed. One that would end with Naruto going to root while Minato was none the wiser. Later in the Hukage's office, what is it that you need Koaru and Homura? Asked Minato. These were one of the few people on the council that were no longer ninja that Minato actually trusted. They were the old teammates of Saru Tobi Hiros and so naturally he was introduced to them in his younger years and they were like mentors to him just like Hiros and was to him. Which is exactly what Danzo was counting on. If he were to have Minato sign something for him he would immediately suspect something but if he were to be asked by those two then his plan would come to fruition. We need you to sign these documents which will allow for former root agents to have partners that would help them reintegrate to society and possibly return their emotions back to them at a quicker rate. If nothing else this will at least be an interesting experiment, answered the two elders showing him the document to prove that there were no falsifications in what they had said. If one were to look closer like what Anoichi was doing in order for him and Minato to see the small seal that was under Genjutsu that wouldn't be sensed if one weren't looking for it. After making Making sure that both he and Minato could replicate it through memory he ended the jutsu and left Minato's mind. Flashback no jutsu kai. Back in the relaxation room located in the Tiendai building. Once they opened their eyes Minato immediately grabbed a piece of paper and began to remake the seal he remembered seeing on that document. Once he finished he took a few seconds to analyze and suddenly widened his eyes in horror, shock and pure rage. The seal caused a low-powered genjutsu based off of the ones used by the Sharingan. The difference between the two however was how the matrix of the seal was organized. Due to how it was organized this genjutsu would affect the first person it came in contact with and would slowly but surely affect the other said person came into contact with. This genjutsu was almost like an identity eraser except it completely erased the existence of the target from your mind unless they were right in your face. The mind would then choose the best course of action to remove the target from the line of sight so that the existence would once again be ignored. It was ingenious and it was what had caused Minato and Kashina along with most of Kanaya's clans to ignore the boy's existence. There were only two ways to counteract the seal. One was to have a counter seal already placed on you. The other way was to have the Daojutsu the seal was based off of the Sharingan. Otherwise the seal would naturally wear off after around 12 years. He couldn't believe him. Two of the few people that had mentored him when he was young had betrayed his trust and he could guess who the third one was. Danzo was the only one who would have the audacity to have done this. It was time for a few pests to be taken care of. Kanaya's council chambers. The Hukage had called for a surprise meeting for just a civilian council and the elders. When they had all arrived they had no idea what was going on and were wondering why the clan heads weren't present. Then finally the Hukage arrived and that is when the temperature in the room dropped by a minimum of 20 degrees. His eyes were cold like ice and his body was 
tense ready to strike at any moment and strike he did. He flashed towards Danzo and placed a paralysis seal on his forehead preventing him from moving and then ordered the ANBU to arrest the civilian council and the elders for crimes against the Namakaze clan and the Hukage. Minato what is the meaning of this? What crimes? Screeched out Koaru with fear clearly etched on her face. Had he finally found out about the seal? If so how? Danzo told them he'd never find out. Minato then explained to them all they had done against him and against his family. To say they were surprised was an understatement. Danzo was furious that he had decided to leave his root bodyguards in their private facility under Kaneha. It seemed as though he was becoming a little senile in his later years and today he might pay the ultimate price for it. Koru and Homura were trying to convince Minato that what they were doing was right by using Naruto's recent escape to their advantage. Minato we needed to do this for the sake of Kaneya. What we did was all in the best interests of Kaneya. Desperately yelled out Koaru in an attempt to make Minato understand why they did this and not punish them for it. Of course her answer wasn't something she was hoping for. A regular Kanai in between the eyes. The punishment for treachery is death. Now you two remaining elders think that what you did WAS for the good of Kaneya. You idiots. If you had just let my son have a normal life then he wouldn't have left Kaneya. He wouldn't hate us and he would have been the best ninja this village HAS ever seen. Yelled out Minato. Minato panting after yelling out his anger towards them. Naruto was the child of prophecy but thanks to your idiocy we have not only lost him but we have made him into our enemy. Now all of you are to be publicly executed later today. Well everyone except for you Danzo can't afford to let you escape with you root agent so I'll just kill you now. With that Minato flashed towards Danzo and began his execution. He began by cutting off his right arm then proceeded to cut him in half from his waist down. After that he threw the remaining upper body that was somehow still alive and threw it in the air where it proceeded to explode in a shower of ink. Shit. This was a decoy. A and Bu. I want two of you to take the remaining civilian council to the Tiendai building to see what we can get out of them before their executions later today. The rest of you get any other ANBU and Junins that are within Kanaha's walls and have them meet Mira here immediately. And if I find out that either of you two have accepted bribes from the council for any reason whatsoever you get the honor of joining them with their executions. Understood. Yelled out Minato. HAI. A few moments later. Now that you're all here it is time for your mission details. Danzo has proven himself traitor and we must eliminate him along with his root subordinates. Each and every one of you will be carrying one of of my signature Hiration Kanai. You are to locate any root facilities you may find and once you do find one you are to throw that Kanai to summon me. I will then proceed to eliminate any threat that presents itself while you continue looking for Danzo. If you throw the Kanai and I do not appear it means that I am currently in combat against several root or am fighting Danzo himself. So make sure you throw the Kanai somewhere inadequable and that you throw it silently so that you are not discovered by the enemy. You then wait for either me or my wife to arrive. Am I understood? Explained Minato as he was handing each one of the Kanahanians one of his Kanai. Kashina cannot perform the Hiration herself but she is able to teleport to one of the Kanai if Minato sends her there instead of going himself. H.A.I. responded all of the Kanahanian in the room. Alright. Now let's go cut off some parasitic roots. And with that they were gone while Minato and Kashina imagined her in her Junin outfit were sitting down. Once they were sure they were alone they broke down crying. Even though they still hadn't neglected Naruto of their own free will they still blamed themselves for this. If they had simply noticed the seal or the strange changes in their thoughts of Naruto then this would have never happened. They just sat there waiting for their chance at revenge. And silently hoping that when they told Naruto this when they next see him that he would forgive them. If they ever see him again that is. Back with Naruto just before arriving at Kiri. Man those bandit screams of pain and misery were music to my ears. Especially when I was slowly rotting off his minuscule dick when I caught him raping an innocent girl. Nothing quite like it. Stated Naruto with an unnerving smile on his face. Haku and Zabuza were used to this by now after witnessing Naruto eliminate at least three bandit camps on their way to Kiri. For some strange reason that she couldn't explain Haku felt strangely turned on by Naruto's show of strength and dominance. Still unknown to her Haku was more of the submissive type when doing the naughty but she would find out eventually. Not that Zabuza knew any of this. Thankfully or I'd be dead right now and you readers wouldn't get any more updates. Kid you are more fucked up in the head than I am. I'm so proud of you. Stated Zabuza as he wiped a fake tear from his eye. Yup they were a group of fucked up people and they wouldn't have it any other way. They noticed that there was movement all around them and they prepared for an attack. Well Zabuza and 
and Haku did. Naruto was still walking ahead while eating a random stick of Pocky that seemed to have appeared out of nowhere. Hint hint all of a sudden two ninjas revealed themselves. One had an eye patch over his left eye while wearing the standard Kiri colors and designs. He had short brown hair and seemed to be around 40 years old. The one next to him seemed to be around Naruto's age. He had a large sword strapped to his back. He wore the traditional Kiri uniform for someone his age. The noticeable feature were his teeth. They were sharp like Zabuza's meaning he was one of the seven swordsmen of the mist. Who are you and what are you doing here? Asked the elderly Kirina not noticing the present of Zabuza and Haku. Fortunately his younger companion did. Zabuza sensei is that you? Asked to a known swordsman. Yay it's Michiro. What's it been seven years since I left to get some supplies and reinforcements? Asked Zabuza rhetorically with a hint of guilt. Yay we all thought you were dead including my Sama. Do you know how badly you hurt her when you didn't come back? Yelled out Chijuro with a rage since he saw their leader Mai as a sort of parent figure. I know. I'm sorry I didn't come back but you'll be happy to know that I got us enough reinforcements to take out Yagura within the week. Responded Zabuza. Really where are they? Are they camping somewhere behind you? Asked the elderly Nin. Actually you're holding your kunai to his neck right now which I would advise removing if you value your continued existence Ningen. Responded Naruto who was silently eating his pioki throughout the entire conversation. The name's Naruto Okami at your service and I'm here to take care of your turtle problem. Said Naruto with a dark grin on his his face which promised great pun and suffering to the one he was talking about with his masterful subtlety. Cough cough sarcasm that's the end of this part guys if you want the next part then like subscribe and leave a comment saying so. This is Maelstrom signing off.